They came to a high thorn hedge through which you could neither see nor scramble. But there was a wooden gate beyond which they could see gardens and a cluster of low wooden buildings. Standing near was a huge man with a thick black beard and hair. Who are you? What do you want? He asked gruffly. I am Gandalf, said the wizard. Never heard of him. And what's this little fellow? This is Mr. Baggins, a hobbit of good family and unimpeachable reputation. Bilbo bowed. Well, what do you want? To tell you the truth, we have lost our luggage and nearly lost our way and are rather in need of help. Gandalf told of the trolls and the goblins. When he came to the wolves, Bjorn got up and strode about and muttered, I wish I had been there. I would have given them more than fireworks. By the time the wizard had got to the eagles, the sun had fallen behind the peaks of the misty mountains. A very good tale, said Bjorn. The best I have heard for a long while. Now, let's have something to eat. The light of the torches and the fire flickered about them as they ate, and Bjorn in his deep rolling voice told tales of the wild lands and especially of the dark and terrible forest of Mirkwood that lay outstretched before them, barring their way to the east. Suddenly, up stood Gandalf. It is time for us to sleep, he said. For us, but not, I think, for Bjorn. In this hall we can rest sound and safe, but I warn you all not to forget what Bjorn has said. You must not stray outside until the sun is up on your peril. Bilbo found that beds had already been laid at the side of the hall. For him, there was a little mattress of straw and woolen blankets. He snuggled into them very gladly and fell asleep. Yet in the night, he woke. There was a growling noise outside, as of some great animal scuffling at the door. Bilbo wondered what it was and whether it could be Bjorn in enchanted shape and if he would come in as a bear and kill them. He dived under the blankets and hid his head and fell asleep again. They were wakened by Bjorn himself. He picked up the hobbit and laughed. Not eaten up by wargs or goblins or wicked bears yet, I see. Bjorn was most jolly for a change. He had been over the river and right back up into the mountains and caught a warg and a goblin wandering the world. From these, he had got news. The goblin patrols were still hunting with wargs for the dwarves. It was a good story, that of yours, said Bjorn. But I like it still better now I am sure that it is true. I shall think more kindly of dwarves after this. Kill the great goblin. Kill the great goblin, he chuckled fiercely to himself. What did you do with the goblin and the warg? asked Bilbo suddenly. Come and see. The goblin's head was stuck outside the gate and a warg skin was nailed to a tree just beyond. Beyond was a fearsome thing. But now he was their friend and Gandalf the wise to tell them their whole story. The way through Mirkwood is dark, dangerous and difficult. I will give you skins for carrying water, 
I will give you bows and arrows, and I will give you a word of warning. Don't stray from the path. That you must not do for any reason. At the gate of the forest, I must ask you to send back my horse and my ponies. But I wish you all speed, and my house is always open to you. Thank you.